good. Everything is where it should be. You notice the uh, relatively clean inner hinge on both the front and back due to the fact that we use the uh, heat technique. Uh, the original binding did not allow for much overhang on the front and back, nor was the text block and the boards themselves actually cut square, but that's often the case with uh, this period of book. Uh, however, it's up to you to compensate for that as you're putting everything together. If everything is absolutely square and where it should be, it does make life easier, but that's hardly ever the case with uh, these older books. The only thing we have left to do now is reattach the original spine, like so, or the spine remnant, I should say, and uh, then finally give uh, everything a very, very light dressing of uh, Neats foot oil and anhydrous lanolin. Uh, so, as to the original spine fragment, you see I did take the time. I figured for the demonstration purposes I should just put in the extra hour and clean it all. Again, up to you. Uh, it did take about an hour to get it all pristine, relatively pristine, free of uh, old adhesive residue and paper residue, etc. At uh, whatever you charge per hour, if you think that's what your client would approve of, then you go ahead and put the extra time in. Otherwise, just carry on and make the best of the situation. You'll also notice I have replaced all of the uh, thin strips of, in this case, card. Well, very light board. Simply cut uh, strips to uh, match the depression in the leather remove all the original, of course, and glue them in. It would probably be best, depending on the uh, quality of your leather, it would probably be best to do that just just immediately before reattaching the spine so as not to uh, uh, make it too stiff and uh, unyielding the leather. Pieces of board will be in this case, the leather is fairly stable, and I don't anticipate any problems, so I did it ahead of time. The attachment itself, very straightforward. Obviously, we'll want to use the strongest bond we can get, which means pure PVA. Now, my brush is charged with uh, just a small amount of uh, paste. That's just to increase the spreadability and the ease of application for the uh, PVA. And it also extends the set time just, just a bit, which isn't a bad thing. But primarily, this is going to be more or less 100% PVA. So it's just a matter of putting a modest amount on and starting to work it with the brush. I could use my finger, but this whole leather does get pretty messy. The, uh, it's often called rust. The uh, leather dry leather residue that uh, comes up. I'll, uh, you can probably see the discoloration of the adhesive there. 
and it just makes a mess on your fingers when you're working it. And the brush is fine. If this were very, very delicate leather, a different treatment might well be appropriate, more appropriate. So you can see any time I brush, it's always from the inside out, always. It's one thing you just get used to. Comes second nature after a while. Very important to uh, for keeping the job as neat as possible. When this goes on, there will be some general pressure applied over a period of time to the entire surface. I'll show you how that's done in just a bit. Uh, it's not extreme pressure, of course, but it is pressure, and hopefully it'll be uniform. That being the case, what you don't want is excess leather around the edges oozing out. I'm also taking care to um, get every crevice. Now, since this leather is dry and very porous due to its degenerative state, we do want to speed things up just a bit. because this will dry a little quicker than normal leather or soak the moisture in causing the surface to dry and we really want this nice and tacky when we put it onto the book. That should do it. Very carefully remove paper. There's our, make sure your fingers are always clean. I'm doing this backwards again for the sake of the camera. I like to focus, as always, on the top first and then the front hinge. I'm just looking to generally place this right now before I really start to pat it down. You've already checked for the overall dimensions to make sure they're in keeping with the new spine. That's close enough. Now we take wax paper, place it down carefully and we start applying general pressure all over. You could start using the uh, bone folder at this point, but uh, fingertips are just as effective and much more giving. You can get into every pocket. So we're after just a general attachment right now. We'll take the tissue paper off in just a moment and check our alignment. We will also double check front and top. That's fine. You'd be surprised how many times you can put something on upside down seems so obvious, but it can happen. There we go. Now, I'm not going to waste any further ado. We've checked. It's looking pretty good. We're going to wrap it now. The only way to get an irregular surface like this, meaning curved, uh, get overall even 
pressure on a surface, the only way I've found, the only practical way, is with a tension bandage. These are commercially available, of course. Any drugstore will have them. Anchor the bandage as best you can with one hand. Pull taut away from the binding and then very carefully lay it down. If you do it otherwise, you run the chance of moving the item. There is no quick and easy way of doing this that I've found. It's just a matter of working it. Do your best to keep the wax paper neat. Again, pull out the tension and only then bring it to the book. And of course the clock is ticking. thing about these tension bandages. They can be applied to the smallest book or the largest family Bible. You want to keep the uh, guard paper, the wax paper, neat as best you can. If it starts to crinkle, there is a chance that crinkle or wrinkle will transfer itself to the leather. That's not a big problem in this case because the leather, this leather is uh, relatively stable and still has some thickness to it. But if it's more delicate, you can transfer marks from the wax paper. So bear that in mind. There you go. So, just keep wrapping. It's an overall general, more or less even pressure. We'll put this aside for, oh, probably a day. And when we take it off, that leather spine should be as attached, as securely attached as one can reasonably hope for. The standard I would use in this case is will be restored leather spine. As it continues to deteriorate, and it will, not a great deal you can do about that, not from a practical point of view, as it continues to deteriorate, will it continue to adhere to the spine? That's the best you can hope for. And obviously it's done only for aesthetic purposes. That's how you attach a uh, spine, you uh, apply the, exactly the same principles if it were cloth, it's a fair bit more straightforward if it's uh, original publisher's cloth, spine fragment. 